Uh, welcome to California Traditions at San Juan Bautista. And, and uh, we're here at the Crane House today and, and uh, buy some, uh, some mission grapes that we have going, growing here. And, and um, so the, the mission grape, we've managed to, to, uh, to salvage some of it that went feral and, uh, from the mission. And, and, uh, but uh, you know, the mission grape was, was uh, really hardy. And, and, um, and then uh, towards the late 1800s, when they brought in European grapes and figured out how to, how to, uh, how to uh, grow disease-resistant European-based grapes, well, then the mission grape apparently fell out of, fell out of favor. And, and, uh, but since it was so, so hardy and drought-resistant, it, uh, it just went feral. And so you can still find it in a few, few different places if you look for it. And, and uh, you know, so, so that's what we've done. We've taken some of the, you know, some of the, some of the original grapes from the mission and then uh, you know, taken cuttings from it and then uh, got them started again here at the, here at the crane house. And, but, uh, but anyway, the, the kind of the history of the mission grape, as near as I can understand it, is that um, there's, there's kind of two different theories about the, the origin of the mission grape. And, and um, the one is that it was a, uh, was an old, uh, old Spanish variety that's no longer grown anywhere in Spain except the Canary Islands, but it's still, it's still grown and used in the Canary Islands. And then the uh, the other theory is that uh, it was a hybrid that that happened you know, between a, a European grape brought over and, and then a, a native grape and that hybridized in sometime in the 1500s. And, and then that, that was the result of that hybridization was uh, was the Mission grape and. And it seems that seemed to make more sense to me because uh, uh, it's just resistant to the to the flux infestation that that uh, is, you know made uh, the growing of the European grapes impossible in the New World and and uh, so so it's obviously not a New World grape because it produces a, a, a type of grape that's that's good for making wine and and uh, but then on the other hand it's it's uh, Really well adapted to the New World environment and then disease resistant to any of the diseases that affect a European grape that's, that's grown here. And, uh, so, so it was the only type of grape that was grown anywhere around and, you know, throughout Latin America, uh, from the 1500s and, and then, uh, it's still grown apparently in Chile and a few different places and still grown in Baja California because of the isolation there that people didn't know about new varieties of grapes, so they've been growing them and making wine from them continuously since the you know, since the early 1700s, and and uh, so this was this is the only type of grape that was that was apparently known, and and uh, you know, like I say, until the late 1800s when they figured out that they could they could uh, good graft disease resistant rootstocks onto onto the European grape, and so. So everybody wanted to have European grapes because you know that was that was more trendy to have European grapes, I guess. And and uh, so so they say this isn't as good a quality wine grape as as the European varieties, but uh, uh, but we've been making wine out of it for a couple of years, and and uh, to my unsophisticated taste, it seems to be just fine. And, uh, you know, and we we made a red wine with it and. And then a couple of years ago, and then the last year when we made it, we made a made a white wine, and it's probably a little bit a little bit better grape for making white wine. And, and uh, but it's a it's it's a it's kind of a halfway in between a between a red grape and a white grape, and so it has a little bit of color. It has a dark colored skin, but the you know but the uh, the flesh is is really light, and so when we made a white wine, it it uh, has a little bit of a reddish tinge and which we th thought was pretty cute, but, but, uh, uh, so, so anyway, it's enthusiastically growing here. Like it seems to seem to do when you give it a little bit of love and care and, and if it doesn't take too much and, you know, so we got, got all the grape clusters going here right now. And so we'll, uh, we'll be harvesting and stomping on grapes and making wine and probably the last part of September, early part of October and, so to be continued,